Okay, I'm here in the port of Long Beach, California. And I wanted to pay homage to that old, weary August ship, RMS Queen Mary. What she did for the millions of soldiers during World War II taking thousands and thousands of soldiers back and forth to New York and from New York to London on the island of England and the thousands of Commonwealth soldiers from Australia all the way to England to fight to save the world from tyranny from 1939 to 1945 the metaphorical she which all ships always stand for symbolize as females well this female this wonderful old lady she carried thousands and thousands of soldiers to culminate finally in May of 1945 the largest war to ever engulf the world. So I thought it would be a propose to come here on Memorial Day weekend 2016 to pay homage. Yes, to that grand old lady, Queen Mary. May, named after the Queen Mother, Mary of Tech, the wife, consort of George V. She was laid on the river Clyde in Scotland at Clyde Bank in 1930 December and in December 1931 she had to quit building Hall 534 because of the Great Depression engulfing the world at that time so the Cunard line who was in charge of building her they asked the British government help us help, help us finish Hall number 534 and they said sure on condition that you merge with the White Star Line who's building the Oceanic who's also broke so thereby emerging I guess probably what with the Great Depression it would be more profitable and easier to loan money to one company instead of two thereby streamlining their labor tactics and abilities to finally finish her sister ship the oceanic that white that white star line was building okay she was finished in 1934 and her maiden voyage was May 27th 1936 the day after the birthday of Queen Mary at that time I guess perhaps maybe that's why that was the day that they picked for her maiden voyage she was originally gonna be called Victoria and uh, as the story goes they asked George V if they could name this ship Hall number 534 after Britain's greatest queen and he should of course he said Queen Mary my, my wife Queen Mary would be delighted <laughs> okay well the story came out in 1979 by uh, the editor of the Washington Post his name was Felix Morley and he said on the maiden voyage he was sitting at the table of Sir Percy Bates the chairman of the Cunard line and he said that I'll tell you the truth how the name came about from Victoria to Queen Mary on condition you will wait you won't print it during my lifetime so that was the story how she came came to be called Queen Mary she's a thousand feet her beam is 118 feet, her height is 181 feet, her draft is 39 feet. And her greatest contribution to World War II was carrying 16,000 soldiers at one time. And on that voyage, if you can believe it, she was hit broadside off the Scottish coast by a 92 foot wave that made her roll 15, 52 degrees.
They said three more degrees and she would have capsized a la the Poseidon Adventure with all those thousands of American and Allied soldiers on board. Those fellows must have had an angel on their shoulders, God bless them. So we're not only paying homage to this grand old lady, but the thousands if not millions of poor souls that lost their lives during that horrific event known as World War II. So like I said, I'm here on Memorial Day week in 2016, not only to pay homage to this grand old lady, metaphorically of course, but the thousands if not millions of Allied soldiers that were maimed, blinded, and killed in that gutter Damerung, World War II. Okay, in uh, October of 1942, on the way off the Irish coast, she accidentally rammed one of her escorts. She cut it in half accidentally, in the and at that time, all ships had to run without lights due to Hitler's gray wolves lurking beneath the waves. 239 souls drowned because of that. And she was carrying the 29th Infantry Division from New York. And her route was usually before the war from Southampton to Cherbourg to New York and back. But of course, what with uh, Germany occupying northern France, they of course they wouldn't have gone to Cherbourg. So it was back and forth throughout the whole duration of the war. New York, Southampton. She was actually on her way to New York from Southampton, mid-ocean, North Atlantic, when the Great War, World War II started in 1939, September, September 1st, but Britain didn't, de didn't declare war on Germany until two days later. So she was ordered to remain in port, and then they uh, gutted her, and they made her a troop ship. And from New York, she went from New York with her sister ship, Queen Elizabeth. They sailed to Australia, the Antipodes, to carry Commonwealth soldiers from there to England. So we're in the port of Long Beach. And I wanted to say her last voyage was 1967, October. And uh, for what it's worth, I actually came that month, 1967, in that fantastic year. Oh, if you could only remember that year. All the persons that have probably forgotten it, that wonderful year of 1969. And oh, alas, all you persons born after that, you'll never know what it was like. It was just a fantastic time. And we drove up to that ship and it was a dirt road. And behind that is a dome where they kept the Spruce Goose from, I think, 1983 to 1993, Howard Hughes' Boondoggle. And it's no longer there, of course. It's in Oregon. And uh, at first, they turned that into a... Uh, after Long Beach bought it for $3.5 million, they bid, it, bid for it from uh, the company who, who owned her in England at the time. I guess the Cunard line was still... Uh, I guess that was the main name of the, the line after they merged with the White Star Line. They bought it for three and a half million dollars. They outbid Japan who wanted a terror up for scrap metal. It became Jacques Cousteau's Maritime Museum, Didn't wasn't profitable. And then uh, it became a hotel for a long time, dinner theater, and now it's uh, apparently it's uh, it's no longer a hotel, it's just a tourist attraction. I guess you can pay to just walk around her decks. So, here you go. Long Beach, California. And I just want to mention that that day, uh, the people, maybe the people scattered all over the world that were here back then in 1967, we went to the Coney Island of the West that day in that direction where the fantastic, fantabulous amusement park, the Pike was. And uh, look it up, Google it. It was a fantastic place to enjoy oneself. Okay, well, here's to this grand old lady 
and to you fellows and of course you ladies you nurses and uh, medical personnel thank you for watching this and to all the military personnel Americans and allied soldiers and female wax of course thank you for your service and God bless you all okay God bless America and please subscribe to my channel thank you